Welcome to the Spare Time Physicist. Today, we will take a closer look at the electric field of a charge in motion. I will try to explain it in an intuitive way and not focus too much on the math. But why is this interesting and why do I focus so much on intuitive explanations? What I will explain today is actually the basis for understanding why magnetism occurs. And while math is a great tool that cannot be left out, intuition shapes the questions we ask. And without critical questions, there will be no progress. Let's get into it. For today's examination, we need two ingredients. The first is the electric field of a point charge at rest. This is known as the Coulomb field. In short, that tells us that the field is equally distributed in all directions and that it falls off with one over the distance squared. The second ingredient is Einstein's theory of special relativity. In specific, we need to remember that the dimensions of space changes with velocity. If an object is in motion relative to an observer, it will be length contracted in the direction of the motion. If you're not too familiar with this, you should check out some of the links in the description. Let's see what happens with the electric field of a charge as it is set into motion. In this animation, the field of the charge is illustrated with field lines that stretches to infinity. The density of the field lines determines the strength of the field. As you move away from the charge, the lines spread out and the field becomes weaker. When we set the charge into motion, the field will be contracted in the direction of the motion. As we see here, the field lines become more dense in the direction perpendicular to the motion and spreads out in front and behind the charge. In the direction perpendicular to the motion, the density of the field lines will increase by a factor of gamma, where gamma is the relativistic Lorentz factor. In the direction of the motion, on the other hand, the field will decrease by a factor of 1 over gamma squared. If we choose gamma to be 2, which is equivalent to 86% of the speed of light, the field perpendicular to the motion will be twice as strong, while the field in the direction of the motion will only be a quarter of the original strength. Mathematically, this is described by Heaviside's equation, which is true for a charge with constant velocity. It may be easier to see from this 3D animation. I have represented the field lines as arrows and their length illustrates how the dimensions of space changes as velocity increases. Again, their density determines the strength of the field. So, now we understand what the field of a moving charge looks like. And we just learned that it changes with velocity because of the relativistic geometry that we live in. But there is actually a little more to it. The thing is that the cosmic traffic police has set a speed limit to how fast information can travel. And this is of course the speed of light. This means that a change in the speed of a charge will not immediately change the field everywhere. The change first have to travel to the observer that experiences the field. This is like the light of the sun. It takes 8 minutes to travel to earth. And if the sun would explode now, we would only know it in 8 minutes when the light from the explosion arrives. When we measure the field of a charge in constant motion, it was emitted sometime in the past. And back then, the charge had a different position. We call this a retarded field. And retarded simply means delayed. The position at which the charge emitted the radiation is known as the retarded position, while the present time position is known as the real position. Heaviside's equation surprisingly shows us that the field of the charge in constant motion is directed towards the real position of the charge even though it was emitted at some retarded position. This indeed seems a bit weird. My textbook on classical electrodynamic comments this and simply states that this is an amazing symmetry, without giving any further explanation. So now I'll do my best to intuitively explain why this is so and why it could not be any other way. To understand it, we simply have to pick up our bow and arrow and go shoot some ducks. First, let's take a look at the situation in the frame where the hunter is at rest. 
Because the duck is moving and because the arrow takes time to travel to the target, you will not hit the duck if you aim directly at it. Instead, you have to aim in front of the duck, right at the spot where it will be when the arrow arrives. The dotted line here is parallel to the arrow and if Legolas stays still, he will always be at the end of the dotted line. Here Legolas of course represents the charge. The arrow and dotted line gives us the direction of the electric field and the duck is the field point at which we measure the field. Let's jump to the rest frame of the duck where the archer instead is in motion. If he keeps a constant velocity, it is quite intuitive to see that he will always stay at the end of the dotted line. And this is true no matter which direction the arrow is fired. The same applies to a charge with constant velocity. The field will always point towards the real position of the charge. What can be confusing is that the arrow is not parallel to its motion when the shooter is not at rest. This explains the situation for a charge in constant motion. But if the archer would make a sidestep after he shot the arrow, it is obvious that he would no longer be at the end of the dotted line. In this case an acceleration is involved and Heaviside's equation is no longer valid. Instead we have to apply the following equation which applies to a charge in arbitrary motion. This is known as the leonard vickert field. Okay. So we just learned that the field always points towards the charge when the velocity is constant. In this case we can use the real position of the charge and Heaviside's equation. But the moment an acceleration is introduced, the field will no longer point towards the charge. Instead it will point towards the direction where the charge would have been had its velocity remained constant. I have made the following animation where the dotted line shows the direction of the field at one specific field point. Let's now perform a quick acceleration of the charge, a coast phase with constant velocity and a quick deceleration to see what that looks like. At first the field at the field point is unaffected by the acceleration and for a short time the dotted line does not point towards the charge. When the red ring carrying the information about the acceleration arrives, the field quickly shifts to the direction of the charge. And it stays here until the point where the charge is decelerated again. As we see, the dotted line continues until the information about the deceleration arrives and then quickly shifts back to the real position of the charge. I hope these examples gave you a better understanding of how electric fields work. This will be used as the foundation for some of my future videos, so stay tuned for that. If this video was helpful to you, then also please like it and subscribe to help this channel reach a larger audience. Thank you for watching.